there we go. So I've just changed my title slightly because I wanted to emphasize that my presentation is about uh, improving uh, public health care through uh, public participation or public voice. And I want to start with a quote from a uh, health committee member in Cape Town that sort of sets the tone for my presentation. And this is what he said. When we as health committee members want to say what is needed in our communities, listen, please listen. So, so sort of uh, the idea behind or the, the sort of the, the, uh, the tone behind the presentation is that communities have something to say and that they should be heard in the uh, audiences. Uh, I want to first talk a bit about the benefits of community participation in health and then just briefly outline what the framework of our health committees and talk about my research with health committees and mainly about how their participation is limited and why it is so and use that to offset a discussion around the new policy initiative in it. <laughs> and to talk about whether they provide a new framework for community participation. So there are a number of studies that uh, they do indicate that uh, you can improve health uh, service delivery and help through community participation. But participation is also seen as central to our primary health care approach and to the right to health. I'm not going to get into detail. Uh, but what are health committees? So in South Africa, health committees are generally seen as a link between uh, communities and local clinics. It uh, may be different in other contexts, but that's how it is in South Africa. Uh, the National Health Act of 2003 is what sort of provides the legislative framework for health committees. And it says that all clinics should have a health committee and it should be composed of the facility manager, the local government councillor and community representatives. Furthermore, it says that provincial legislation should stipulate what these health committees should be doing. Um, there are a few gaps, uh, as you can already see in that legislation, that it doesn't say anything about the role of and also it doesn't say anything about how health committees should be formed, should they, they be elected structures or should they be appointed. Currently six out of nine of South African provinces have provincial legislation and interestingly there seems to be some consensus that health committees should be governance structures and they should play an oversight role. Uh, there's also interestingly sort of consensus that health committees should be appointed by the local provincial, the provincial health ministry. So that's quite interesting. So we have a community participation structure that is sort of uh, top down, where, where have community representatives are not elected but appointed. In the Western Cape, where my work is done, uh, there's no legislation currently. There was draft legislation, which was then uh, not in implemented, and there are sort of initiatives to, to amend another act of legislation to health committees. But currently, health committees in the Western Cape are existing in a policy way. Then we have sort of two new policies that are relevant for health committees. One is the National Health Insurance uh, <coughs> Paper, and the other is, is a draft policy paper on health government structures. And I'll get back to that. But the, first, just talk a bit about my understanding of what community participation is. Uh, my understanding is based on those three authors, and it basically sort of entails three key elements. That participation means that uh, People are part of a decision-making process. That they are part of identifying problems, problems and identifying finding solutions. And to do that, uh, they need to there need to be some form of power sharing the kind of uh, Based on those sort of definitions uh, and on my research with health committees, I came up with sort of four for uh, participatory roles, limited participation where there's limited decision making, partly participatory where health committees have some kind of say, they may be advised or approves or plans, and then meaningful participation where they have joint decision making and control. 
And then there's sort of uh, one role which doesn't fit into the system, and that's where the health committee sort of work outside the health system, for instance, through addressing social determinants of health. A slightly different version if we sort of don't look at uh, what health committees uh, work outside the health system, we to talk about participation in health governance and, and involvement where they more sort of support the health system. Uh, but where the activities or the tasks that perform are identified by the health system and the project. And when I try to analyze what health committees are currently doing, uh, you can see that their main role is actually sort of what I call limited participation or involvement. So that's where they go to the clinic and they ask the facility manager, what can I do today? And the facility manager says, you can clean the clinic because it's dirty or you can manage the patients because there's a lot of tension in the clinic and they complain about the queue, so if you can handle that. So, health committees currently contribute mainly through what I call involvement and not through participation. And if we want to see them participate in improving health service delivery, I think we need to strengthen their participation. That would mean that they focus on, on changing, changing the health system rather than sort of to provide what I call band-aid assistance to the clinic and, and trying to get patients to adopt to a health system that is, is poorly functioning. So what are the ways that communities could, or community participation could uh, improve health care? Uh, the first way would be for them to be involved in what I call health governance at facility level. So that's where they could uh, identify, identify problems and be part of, of finding solutions. It's where they could have oversight and we had a whole uh, session on, on monitoring and evaluating services. They could be an accountability structure and that's sort of put a question mark here because I think there's a tension between being part of governance, being part of uh, creating strategies and plans and then uh, being an accountability structure because who, who's holding who accountable? So I, I think there's some more uh, thinking that needs to go into how they can do that. Obviously they can address social determinants of health and, and then one thing that would say are not doing at the moment would be to participate in uh, policy development. For that to do, they would, prob we would probably have to see a more sort of tiered level of community participation because health committees generally operate at its facility level. But I think it's important to see how they could be part of a, a system where issues at local level are taken a higher level. One of the main so one of the main factors why health committees uh, play a limited role at the moment uh, is that they are very confused about what their role is and what kind of mandate they have. And obviously that is linked to the fact that, that they exist in a policy vacuum. So, so they actually don't have a, a mandate. There are some other issues which are not uh, that relevant for, for this paper, but, but just uh, generally there was sort of a, a lack of a common vision of what community participation means, and, and both facility manager and, and our committee member often agree that the main role is to assist the facility, health facility. Uh, another issue was that the facility managers often didn't attend a health committee meeting. So obviously you can't have that sort of discussion with people with the facility managers actually. Then we come to the policy discussion. So uh, in 2011 we had what's called the Green Paper, which is the first policy paper on a national health insurance, which is supposed to include the restructuring of the primary health care system. The national health insurance does not recognize health committees or any other community participation structures at all. It is very vague on how it understands community participation, but the little it says, it seems like uh, participation, there's very limited participation in decision making. 
Rather, community participation is envisioned as a group of primary healthcare agents who are said to be responsible for involving the community. And that involvement seems to center around identifying individuals at risk and identify uh, risky behavior and then address them from the clinic side. So, in strong contrast to the definition of community participation that we talked about. There's another policy that came out uh, last year. It's a draft policy on health governance structures. And, and that's very interesting in that it conceptualizes health committees as governance structures that should be both concerned with planning and with oversight. So that's, uh, that sort of idea of community participation is obviously similar to the ones that we find in provincial policies. But it is different in, in that it uh, stipulates that health committees should be elected by communities. Uh, so where the provincial policies have a, a top-down approach, uh, the national policy actually has a bottom-up approach. So sort of in summary, there's, there's a clear tension between the national health insurance policy and other policies on community participation. And there's also a tension between the policies and how participation is practiced. So in conclusion, I would say that the National Health Insurance needs to rethink its notion of community participation. And it needs to consider how health committees and other community participation, other uh, structures, fit into the reengineering of primary health care. And obviously there's a need to ensure that all these policies sort of linked together so we don't have policies that say totally different things or have different understandings of how uh, communities can be involved in health. And finally, I think there's a this need to, to look at how different structures fit together so that, and that links very much to the uh, previous uh, session on community accountability, to have a tiered model participation that allow issues that local issues to be raised at a 